The words lab, science, and experiment can invoke many different images and perspectives for different people. Do you think of sleeping through boring lectures in high school? Cutting-edge technology that changes the world and the way we view it? A mad scientist hunkered over a bubbling flask. Whether science as a whole has typically bored you or fascinated you, there's no denying that it changes our perspective of reality and helps us access new frontiers of knowledge and solve tough problems. So today, here are Unexplained Mysteries, we'll be taking a look at three interesting science experiments. Robert Cornish, The Lazarus Experiment Resurrection, Hollywood, The Bible, Dogs, and Capital Punishment all come together in the story of Dr. Robert Cornish's Lazarus Experiments. Dr. Cornish was a Californian physician, academic, and medical researcher, with a mad scientist-like obsession with raising the dead. Dr. Cornish was born in the early 20th century, and back then even CPR, which was discovered in the 1950s, would have seemed like magic. Basic resurrections didn't exist, other than a few wives' tales that weren't particularly effective. Still, Dr. Cornish believed it was possible. In 1934, he found success experimenting on fox terriers. He ultimately possessed five of the dogs, named Lazarus 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. The name Lazarus is a biblical reference to a man brought back to life by Jesus. His experimental method was to euthanize the dogs, inject into their thighs a combination of adrenaline, liver extract, and gum arabic that thinned the blood. He would then breathe into their mouths. The corpses were placed on a seesaw that was continually rocked back and forth to promote circulation. When Dr. Cornish saw a leg twitch and detected a heartbeat, he knew he'd achieved his goal of bringing a dog back to life. The only problem was at this point he was on dog four. Lazarus one, two, and three didn't survive. But Lazarus five would later survive as well. The two surviving dogs could crawl, bark, sit, and eat, but the quality of their life wasn't the same. They were blind and severely brain damaged. He attributed the varying success to the time between death and his treatment. When Lazarus IV was revived, it was only five minutes after his heart had stopped. Dr. Cornish had discovered a method of resuscitation, not resurrection, and was therefore limited by time. In other words, the death was only a clinical death, in which circulation and breathing stops. Most organs of the body can survive clinical death for a period of time. Although the dog's unconsciousness was apparent, they weren't entirely deceased for the first few minutes. Although Dr. Cornish had good intentions, and his findings could have been applicable to reviving drowning victims and many others, he was shunned by the public and scientific community. Something about his zombie-like experiments didn't sit right with people. Dr. Cornish was kicked out of his University of California laboratory to continue his studies at home. How could Dr. Cornish convince people of the necessity of his research? Apparently, by taking his story to Hollywood. The universal horror film Life Returns served as an advertisement for Dr. Cornish's work. In the film, Dr. Cornish portrays himself, and real footage from the Lazarus experiments are used. Unfortunately, Life Returns turned out to be rather forgettable, and after his 15 seconds of fame, Dr. Cornish once again struggled to find public support. Still, he wished to continue his pursuits, now with human subjects. Shockingly, no one volunteered to be killed and subsequently revived by him. But luck appeared to be on his side. In 1947, Thomas McMoningle, a child murderer, was awaiting a death sentence in San Quentin. Thomas reached out to Dr. Cornish, offering his body after his execution. The only problem with prison warden Clinton Duffy wasn't accepting of the idea. Since Thomas was going to be executed in a gas chamber, Dr. Cornish couldn't have immediate access to the body. The chamber required an hour to air out before it was safe to enter. Still, Dr. Cornish wasn't ready to give up, and begged for a chance to demonstrate the success of experiment using sheep and gas. The bizarre scenario gave Cornish the spotlight again, but ultimately his proposal was rejected by the state of California and Thomas was executed permanently. 
By the 1950s, Cornish had quit medical research and started marketing his product. This was Dr. Cornish's tooth powder with vitamin D and fluoride. He died in California in 1963. Though his methods wouldn't be repeated in today's world, the subject of how and when we as humans can revive is still an important one that will be studied for years to come. Mice with half-human brains Laws concerning the ethics of research and experimentation have only become stricter in recent years. That is especially true for studies on primates. So an important question is, how can we study the human brain when we can't actually use one? The solution may be to make the brains of other animals as human as possible. Steve Goldman, a researcher at the University of Rochester Medical Center in New York, led a study that explored raising mice with human cells. These were glial cells, which help support nerve cells and strengthens their connections. The research team took these cells from human fetuses donated to science and injected them into the brains of baby mice. Since the human cells were immature, they continued growing and dividing in the mouse brain. While the mice retained their neurons, all the non-neuronal cells in the brain were human. The glial cells transformed into astrocytes. This is the most common type of glial cell. It strengthens synaptic connections and therefore increases communication between nerve cells. They also play a large role in conscious thought. There were ultimately 12 million of these cells, and it was the only space inside the brain of a mouse that limited further division. This led to the mice scoring higher on tests of memory and cognition. The human cells were improving the efficiency of the mice's existing neural network. However, they were still very much mice, and their brains were too. Goldman himself clarified this, stating that this method does not provide animals with additional capabilities that could in any way be ascribed or perceived as specifically human. Rather, the human cells are simply improving the efficiency of the mouse's own neural networks. It is still a mouse. He also added, it's like ramping up the power of your computer. The intention behind these experiments isn't to create super mice to do our bidding, but to help advance our understanding of disease inside the human brain without actually harming humans. In the future, we could have these little mice to thank for unlocking significant medical breakthroughs. Monkeys with human neural cells Another research team focused on a similar concept, but now with monkeys. The advantage to this is that the brain of a monkey makes a much better human replica than a mouse's. However, this comes with increased ethical issues. Monkeys have much greater intelligence compared to mice, and therefore a greater awareness of suffering. Plus, inserting human neural cells into a monkey has the potential to create a being that is somewhere in between a human and a monkey, which raises additional concerns. Still, a team of Korean and Canadian researchers went ahead with the idea. They transplanted human neural stem cells into the brain of monkeys. The cells transformed into various neurons, but didn't create defects such as tumours. This finding is important because it's believed that human neural stem cells could be the ideal source for cell replacement and gene transfer. This would be to help patients with Parkinson's disease, Huntington's disease, Alzheimer's disease, spinal cord injuries, and strokes. Stem cell therapy research can greatly affect the prognosis of these types of patients. On the benefits of this research, co-author Dr. Sung Yu Kim of the University of British Columbia Hospital stated, Stroke is the fourth major cause of death in the US behind heart failure, cancer, and lower respiratory disease. While tissue plasminogen activated treatment within three hours after a stroke has shown good outcomes, stem cell therapy has the potential to address the treatment, that being the needs of those stroke patients with whom the activated treatment was unavailable or didn't help. Monkeys with human stem cells can help us test these kinds of treatments. Another group of scientists, this time from China, conducted a similar study, now with human brain genes. The effort was led by Bing Su, a geneticist. Monkey embryos were exposed through a virus carrying the human version of the gene in order to see its effects on brain size and intelligence. 
only five of 11 monkeys survived this process, and they ended up with between two to nine copies of the gene. Monkeys with the modified DNA performed better on a memory test, experienced a longer period of brain development, but didn't show increased brain size. There's a debate within the scientific community over whether these monkeys' experiments are ethically sound. Jacqueline Glover, a University of Colorado bioethicist, commented on the research, stating, You just go to the planet of apes immediately, in the popular imagination. To humanise is to cause harm. Where would they live and what would they do? Do not create a being that can't have a meaningful life in any context. While the concern is definitely justified, there's significant use to this research. One benefit is that isolating one gene, inserting it into the brain of a monkey, and observing the effects give us a better idea of how the human brain develops and how different genes contribute. These three experiments cause curiosity and interest to people all around the world. It helped people find appreciation for the scientific community, and some find this line of work fascinating. Evolving and learning within science can be interesting. So what do you make of these scientific experiments? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below, and help us by growing this community whilst working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.